You're listening to Good Morning Gwinnett, a division of ABK Media Group, hosted by Audrey Bell Kearney, sharing stories about people and places around beautiful Gwinnett County every day at 9 a.m. Southern living at its best. Another edition of Good Morning Gwinnett. I'm your host, Audrey Bell Kearney. So happy to be here with you today. Kind of missed you guys yesterday. Again, some technical problems. I got to tell you, man, technology, I love it. But sometimes I just want to kick it in the butt because sometimes it is pretty rough to get going. And it's so funny because here lately, um, every time I've had a guest scheduled to come on, um, I've had some kind of issue with the uh, with my with my audio. And, and so yesterday I, I I could, I could talk, but people couldn't hear me. So it was just crazy. And I never know when this is going to happen until it actually happens. So that's why I'm kind of changing the format just a little bit. Um, my guests are probably going to be recorded, uh, recorded and brought on, but I'll be coming on live daily. Like this is live. I'm talking to you live right now from my studio. But when I have a guest, it's probably going to be a pre-recorded show because that way I want to make sure that you get the, get a chance to hear what the guest has to say and, you know, there's no hiccups. And if there are hiccups, I can, you know, I can fix them because we're pre-recording. And, um, yeah, you know, because I want to do it live. I want to bring the guests to you live. But, unfortunately, technology won't let me right now. I'm going to improve that as I move along in the show. We're only on episode number 33. Um and we're still moving forward, and I'm still continuing to do the show four times a week, and which I'm happy about that because I really enjoy doing this show. So, look, look forward to more expansions and changes and adjustments because that's what life is about. Life is about making adjustments. You know, don't sweat the small stuff because it's all small stuff. Make the necessary adjustment and keep it moving. And so, you know, that's what I'm that's what I'm doing. I'm making adjustments as I go along. I know there's some podcast masters out there who probably would be. Uh, stirring in their seat, you know, just to know that I'm doing a live show, but I'm doing live and I think I'm doing live because I've done live radio, um, for quite a few years and I, and I'm just used to live. And so that's why I like, I like doing live and I'm going to keep perfecting this until I get it right. And hopefully each episode, I, you know, I bring something that you can use to the table that's going to help you, you know, change your life or change the lives of somebody around you who may hear something on the show that can help them. So I'm going to keep doing it until I get it right. And I just say to you, keep listening and bear with me and keep sharing the show until we get it right. <clears throat> so today, um, for my people helping people segment of the show, which is um, what I like to do at the top of the show when I, when I really have the time, sometimes I just don't have the time because I might have a guest and I need to just jump on with the guest. And then sometimes I do have the time. So I just wanted to um, talk about my people having people segment today. I'm going to talk about uh, ha- Habitat for Humanity, Gwinnett Habitat for Humanity. Um, they do a lot of good things. But one of the things they really do that is really cool is that they help you if you want to become a homeowner, become a homeowner. Um, you have to put in some time, though. You have to. There's some criteria that you have to meet, and you have to put in some time, you know. And you know, but think about this: if you really wanted a a home, they would help you build your home. And I think that's so amazing. That's my dream. My dream is to build my home. Actually, my dream is to build my home this year. And I've been holding out for this this one piece of land for five years. Um, it's pretty close to where I live right now. And I actually, and there's some beautiful homes over there and it's a lot of space. I don't know. I don't know why I like land so much. You would think that I grew up on land. I did not. I grew up on the bricks in Newark. Um, but I like land and I think in my past life, I must've had like horses and land and things like that because I love horses and I love land. I can't explain it for the life of me why, but I do. And so I've been holding out for some land, but here's the thing. Habitat for Humanity will help you build your home, but there are some certain uh, preliminary criteria that you have to meet, and I want to run through them real quick because this is an opportunity. If you need to move, if you are in a place that's undesirable or you need more space or, you know, you just you want to have your own house, you, you may, re- may, may be able to re- reach out to Habitat for Humanity and um, see where they help you build your house and see exactly what you need. But here's, here's a few things you need if you want to partner with them to um, get your house. So you must be a legal permanent resident of the United States. You have to be legal. Um, you must have lived or worked in Gwinnett County for at least 12 months. Um, your yearly income must meet the income guidelines. And that's really important because you can't make too much, which can't make too little either. And they have guidelines on the website. Um, you must have an income 
you must you got to have some kind of income in coming in because you want to be able to pay your mortgage. You want to have uh, at least one year of continuous work, uh, steady work. If you don't have, have, if you haven't been working for at least a year, don't waste your time going over there because you have to have that. And we got to know that you, you know, that you can afford the house because you, the one thing you don't want to do is get into the house and then get upside down on your mortgage because you don't, you know, you don't have the income coming in. Now you got to give up this house, this beautiful house that you built. So you don't want to do that. Um, you must have reasonably good credit. And uh, if you had a bankruptcy, it has to be um, discharged at least two years prior to starting this. And you must be making your payments on time to get out of debt. You must have a need for the housing. Um, because your current housing is either un- unaffordable, unsafe, or overcrowded. Uh, you must partner with Gwinnett Habitat and contribute sweat equity. You got to put the work in. You got to help build your home, but you also got to help build the homes of other people who are in the same situation, who are looking to um, get a house through Habitat for human- Humanity. Um, you got to attend, attend a workshop, 10 hours, 10 educational workshops. All families must complete a total of 250 hours worth of, uh, of working income guidelines vary. So you want to check out their website for more information about the program, for more information about Gwinnett Habitat, you can go to habitatgwinnett.org, habitatgwinnett.org. They seem to have a really wonderful program there, especially if you are in need of housing, um, for, you know, if it's unsafe, if it's overcrowded, or you just can't afford it right now, but you really want your own house because you're used to living in your own house. And I get it because that's where I am right now, but I want to build and I want these people to sell me this land. And, you know, I talked to the guy, he, he talked about selling it to me. He just got to come down on the price a little bit more. The land costs more than the house. And I think that's because it's a shortage here in Gwinnett County for some reason, but well, not for some reason, people love it here and they're moving in. That's the reason. I love it here and I'm trying to stay. So that's why I'm holding out for this land. And so one day, hopefully soon, the land owner will say, okay, Orger, you can you can get the land for the price you wanted at. So I'm putting it out to the universe that the land is mine. The land is mine. Okay. So listen, let the house be yours. Put it out to the universe. Let the house be yours. Reach out to Habitat for Humanity and Gwinnett. They are willing to help you get started if you meet their criteria. Um, and the, and the, the information that you need is on their website, habitatgwinnett.org. Okay, the in, the Infinite Energy Center is getting a facelift. Actually, it's getting some remodeling done, some renovations, and some expansion. So there was a seventy-three million dollar um, contract approved recently to do some renovations on the Infinite Energy Center, and also to do some ex- expansion. So that's pretty cool too. Um, I've been there before, and it's really nice in there. So I can't imagine what it's going to look like once they do the renovations and the expansion moving forward. That's down by the Gwinnett Chamber. So if you go all the way down Sugarloaf, because if you've never if you've never been there and you don't know where it is, if you go all the way down Sugarloaf Parkway, you will be able to see, um, you'll be able to see it all the way down to the end on the left hand side, right next to the Gwinnett Chamber, and um, but, and it was nice then, so I can't imagine what it's gonna look like now. That's gonna be interesting to see too. Norcross has just broke ground on their new facility coming to Norcross. It's going to be, you know, kind of in the center of downtown area. And it's like, it's urban living, but small town. And it's kind of cool because I, I can almost visualize what that looks like. It's probably going to be like a residential building. Um, and I'm wondering if it's going to be mixed, mixed use. But anyway, it's going to have 200 and a, uh, 184 apartments in it. 280 parking spaces and they just broke ground this was a partnership between gateway ventures and central development and in, in norcross so they're going to be bringing you some more residential living um for you to be able to stay in norcross i was downtown norcross um when I, I got down there by mistake and i just love how quaint and how you know that i like that I'm, I'm a country girl at heart i was born in georgia raised in georgia so i am a country girl at heart um, and I love the small town feel. I lived in uh, North Carolina shortly for a brief, like two years in, um, uh, in North Carolina, shout out to North Carolina, shout out to Spring Hope. Um, I, I went to, I used to go to Rocky Mount all the time. Shout out to Rocky Mount. Cause I like Rocky Mount. I had a business in Rocky Mount. I had a school in Rocky Mount for entrepreneurship for, for uh, young kids. And, um, uh, I would go downtown Rocky Mount because it was such a beautiful downtown place, but it wasn't developed. Like it was old buildings that had not been developed for years, but they had like a, um, train track right down the center of the street. And then they had this really, the streets was really large. 
And I used to just go there because I just thought it was just so beautiful, even though the stores were closed and a lot of them were old and needed to be redone. Some of them should have been torn down. But, you know, it was just the feel of what it was. And I just love to go down there. And so I'm, I'm a small town girl at heart. Um, even though I grew up in the big city of Newark, I am a small town girl at heart. And I just love everything small town. So I'm excited to see what Norcross is going to be doing with this new building building the Lillian Webb Crossing Development is what it's called. The Lillian Webb Crossing Development is what it's called and it's coming to you soon. So if you're looking for a new place to live, if you're listening to me around the world and you're thinking about some place to live but you don't want to be in the country, we invite you to check out Gwinnett because we got a lot of a lot of development going on right here in, in Gwinnett. A lot of it. We got the Revel the, the Revel projects coming along, and that's going to be a mixed use project, and that I, that is going to be absolutely beautiful. I saw like some drawings for that project, and when I tell you, it was like, man, that's nice. I want to move down there. Like part of me want to live in the country, part of me want to live right here on my land, and other parts like, you know what? I need a condo downtown, um, downtown Lawrenceville. Well, they, they're calling that the new downtown Gwinnett. So downtown Gwinnett. Um, so pretty, some amazing things happening here. If you want to know more about what we're doing in Gwinnett and you're thinking about moving here, you can always go to, to our website, GwinnettCounty.com and check out all the amazing things that's going on around here. I'll tell you about some of the things that's happening, but it's a lot more. I can't cover them all in 30 minutes, but there are a lot more things going on around here, especially if you're thinking about moving your business here or reloading, relocating here to live. It is a beautiful place to live. I do this show because I love Gwinnett. Every, every time I say that, I'm smiling. So I must really, really love Gwinnett. It's crazy. Um, and I feel like I'm home because I am, you know. And so I want, you know, people to, now, now, now listen, I know a lot of people say too many people are moving here. But there are people that want to move. They want something different. They want something new. And um, this, is a, this is a nice place to come out to. So check it out. Go to GwinnettCounty.com. That's our website to find out more information about what's going on here. How to re- relocate your business here. And um, also, you know, what it's like living here. we got great school systems here as well. Um, my brother's moving here pretty soon. I'm excited about that. He's going to be moving in Loganville, which is in Gwinnett County. And I'm so excited about that. That is literally seven minutes away from my house. So I am super excited to have him here. Um, he know that he wants his son to go to Grayson High School. He's going to be in the eighth grade, so he still has one year left. Um, that's my baby nephew. And so he came, he visited, he loved it. You know, I had people that have come here and have visited and just love it here and, you know, say, you know, I'm going to move back. So excited about that. Let's see. If you're looking for something to do tomorrow night, you got stuff to do tomorrow night. So tomorrow morning, if you want to, I don't, I think the kids are in school, but if you got kindergarten age kids and you're not in school or if you're homeschooling and you want to take your kids out on a field trip, they're going to be having a scavenger hunt hunt at the Gwinnett Historic Courthouse. So you can go there. It's called Curious Scavenger Hunt, and it's going to be um, tomorrow morning from 10 to 2. Go there, check it out, take the kids out of the house on a field trip you, if you're homeschooling. Um, this will be a good thing for them. They'll get a chance to check out the, the, the historic, Gwinnett Historic Courthouse and also have a little fun doing it at the same time. If you're looking for something to do tomorrow night, comedian Joe Claire will be at the Atlanta Comedy Theater um, at Norcross. The show starts at 8.30. Um, ticket prices start at $20, go all the way up to $120. And the Atlanta Comedy Theater is located at 4650 Jimmy Carter Boulevard, and that's in Norcross. It's going to be tomorrow at 8.30. Listen, sometimes you need a little laughter in your life. Sometimes you need somebody to say something funny just to just to get you through what's been going on. Because it's, sometimes it's rough. You know, you want somebody to, to give you something to laugh about because you had a rough day. Go out and get some comedy in your life. I like to laugh. My husband is a comedian. He works every day, but he's a comedian when he's home. He keeps me laughing. And he keeps us all laughing. He's crazy. Like he he and he has one of those like he has like that type of uh funny that Ellen does. Like it's like not even intentional. It's just like I'm gonna say something and, and it just comes out funny. I think that's how Ellen is. Like we love Ellen in my house because she's like that type of person. Like she'll say something and it just comes out funny. Um and that's how he is. So he keeps me laughing. Uh I I gotta talk about something today. I wanna talk about integrity. And it, and this is, I said I wasn't going to talk about this, and this is the last time I'm going to talk about it, but I need to talk about it. You know, um, for business owners out there who are listening, I'm a business owner, and I, and I, I got to, I, I help the client. So what I do, so for those of you who don't know what I do, I create Fire TV channels for Amazon, and I also create Roku channels for um, 
uh, for people that want to have their shows or their products or their books or their business advertised on Roku and Fire TV. So what I do is I create branded channels on these platforms for business owners or authors or, you know, anybody who wants to be on TV. You could be an actor or actress and you are a singer or a pianist or something and you just want to have some um some FaceTime on TV because you're trying to build the brand. So that's what I do. I help you get your face out there. I have a media company, ABK Media Group. So you probably heard that at the beginning of the show in the intro. And, um, you know, and I help people get PR for what they're doing. I send out press releases every time we do a channel. And we post all the channels that we build. So what happened was we built a channel yesterday. Well, we built a channel last week, and it, it actually got approved yesterday. And we, you know, the person that we built it for, we posted it on Facebook because you got to do the social media thing. We posted it on Instagram and LinkedIn and things like that to, you know, to help her get exposure for what she was doing because she had a new channel on Amazon Fire TV. And um, I'm big on explaining like what you need to what you need to understand about your industry especially this industry because it's a it's a people think youtube all the time they don't think tv because you know youtube has been around for a long time so that's what most people are used to they're used to being on youtube but you can be actually be on television because a lot of people have smart tvs in their home and a lot of people have cut the cord to cable and direct tv and stuff like that because they don't need it anymore because there's so much content on television on smart tvs so they really don't need to have cable or direct tv anymore so they've cut the cord they either own a fire stick or apple tv or a roku box or something some kind of streaming device they own and some of them are just like smart television so i built this woman this channel and she's on amazon fire tv so look just to just to help you understand so just like you have apps on your phone they have apps on tv now and but i call them channels some people call them channels some people call them apps they're the same thing um it just depends on what you want to say i call them channels because i believe they're channels like i'll go to netflix because i believe it's a channel on my on my TV. I'm used to watching TV, so I'm used to going to channels. I just get to the channel a, a little bit of a different way. And so anyway, built this woman a channel for her for her business. She's a minister. I think she's a minister. Um and she was excited about it. We you know we launched it out on, on on social media. We talked about it for a minute. She was excited and then someone came behind me probably about a good three hours at after we put it out. They came behind me and they told her that people would not be able to find her channel on Amazon and she was upset. So she, she sent me an instant message on Facebook and she said, thank you so much for your help. Delete my channel. I don't want it. It's not going to fit into what I'm doing. And I'm like, well, what, what in the world? Why would you delete a channel that you paid for? So I, I reached out to her and I was really busy because I'm building the whole network, not even just a channel right now. I'm building the whole network for someone and it, and then it, it has a lot of channels on it. Um, and, and you know, maybe the latest show I talk more about, I think I'm going to go live and actually talk about the difference anyway. But anyway, I said to her, do you have a few minutes? I had to stop my work because I had a client who was obviously upset about something. She wanted me to delete a channel that she had paid money for. She wasn't asking for a refund. She just wanted me to delete it. And I was like, why would she do that? Like, do you know that the, the opportunity you have for people to see you on Amazon, like Amazon is in 100 countries around the world. But anyway, she reached out to me. I gave her a call. And I asked her what had happened, and she said to me, there was a gentleman who had seen the post where we were promoting her channel and said that her channel would not be able to be found on Amazon. I was like, why not? And he said, well, because you're going to be up under Audrey's, you know, my show, and that's the only way people are going to be able to find you. And it was crazy. And I said to her, listen, you go over to Amazon right now. You type in the name of your channel, and it's going to pop right up on Amazon. You won't see me anywhere. And she did. And she was like, wow. And I said, what is this guy's name? And she would not tell me his name. But I remembered I had a friend um, who was also a client. And she had purchased her channel. We did her channel. And she did a mass blast of her channel. And the person, somebody had reached out to her. And they was asking her all these questions that they could have easily have asked me. Um, but they was asking her. And she said to me, she felt like it was something not right about his questioning. And so she said, well, you know what? If you want to know something, reach out to Audrey. What he did indirectly, he went to my website and he sent me a post on my website. He asked me a few questions. Now, he asked me simple questions and I gave him the answer to those questions, right? 
but it was the same person. And come to find out, he's launched a business very similar to mine. She wouldn't give me his website. She said his website looked just like mine. I was like, that is crazy. His website looks just like mine. His site, his um, his business is like mine. He's copied everything I've done, and he's going behind my client's back, and he's trying to steal their information. And so he told her, I could do it again for you. You just got to pay me. She's already paid. And had I not reached out to her and said, well, okay, I'm just going to delete the channel, which you don't do that as a business owner because you want to make sure that your clients are happy. So I reached out to her and we wound up talking in about 40 minutes. And I was explaining to her, like, this is what you have and why would you delete it? And she told me about this guy who was obviously very unscrupulous. I mean, just, I mean, the integrity. And I, I, it has bothered me and I'm trying not to let it bother me, but I just can't believe how dirty and low down people can be. And you're supposed to be in business, you know? And so I don't, I don't know if she knows the guy, but my thing is, don't you think if someone paid good money for something and they felt like they got gypped, they're not going to come back to the person that they paid the money to to find out, well, how can we do this? Like, it's crazy. And so I just want to talk about having integrity. Listen, if you are a business owner out there, you want to make sure that you have integrity because people talk. People talk. Now, I've talked to several people about this guy. They have deleted him from their LinkedIn, their Facebook, their email list because he's slimy. And people talk, you know, and if somebody has done something wrong to you or said something against your brand that's not true, make sure you talk to that person to try to clear it up. Now, sometimes you people just not going to like you. That's just the, that's just how it is. They're going to find something wrong with you. But if you have a client and you know that you've done a good job for them and somebody has come along and said something different, make sure to talk to the client because you can, that person could easily say, don't ever work with this person again because they did this to me. And you didn't even have a chance to defend yourself. Had I just let that slide because she was like, it's not going to fit in with what I'm going to do, I would have never had the chance to talk to her and even give her more information on some other things that she was trying to do in the video space had I not had the opportunity to talk to her. And she said to me, I'm so glad I talked to you. She had told her husband. It was crazy. And I was like, what kind of person would do that? You know, and I, 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 there are just those people out there. And this industry is huge. It's room for everybody. I mean, it's room for everybody everywhere. People think there's a limited amount of money. People think that there's a limited amount of work and limited. It's not. You just got to find the people that want to work with you. And yes, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard being a professional at anything. It takes work. If you're going to be a professional football player, you go to practice every single day and you go out there, you get hit, you get beat. It's the same thing in business. You get beat up. If you're trying to be an entrepreneur, you get beat up. But here's the thing, have integrity. Get beat up and have integrity at the same time. I have for 20 years, 21. I've been beat down to the ground. And I still get up and I still try to hold my head high and have integrity about what I do. And that's what you got to do. If you have a client, if if you have anybody that you're working with, they got a question, answer their questions. Sometimes I'm a little late getting back to my email, but I get back and I apologize for getting back late because I got a bunch of stuff going on, you know? And yes, I need an assistant. I know that, but I still try to get back to people. Even though it may take me a day or two, I still try to get back to people because I want them to know that, that their email matter to me and I'm not ignoring them. It's just that I have a lot going on. That's just apologize. You you don't have to say, I'm sorry, but say, I apologize. Listen, I apologize for getting back to you late. And so for me, that conversation yesterday, it led me to, to understand that if, if, if anything, I need to tell people that my door is open. If you got a question, if I've served you in any kind of way, and you have a question about the service that I've given you, please reach out to me before you fall into the trap. Like this lady almost fell into with this slime ball who actually was trying to fraud her because that's what he was trying to do. He gave out false information about me and what I had provided to her. And had she not listened to me at that moment and went online and actually pulled up her own information on Amazon.com and saw her own TV channel right there, she would have lost that money and had gotten more, the exact same work, probably not better, but the exact same work that I had done. And, um, pay extra money for something she didn't have to. So listen, I shared that story with you because it's very important that if you are in business, you want to make sure that you serve people because God is watching you. And karma is a mother freaker. Let me tell you, he is watching you. And if you out there trying to fraud people and do people wrong, it's going to come back to bite you. If you're on a mission to become successful, don't do it by trying to step on somebody's head and kick them in the back. 
because it doesn't work like that. Your dream is your dream. God gave you that dream, so you run with it. Don't try to take somebody else's dream and make it your dream. Don't try to take somebody else's business and make it your business. Your business is your business. You know, and if you don't have an original idea, sit down and ask God, what do you want me to do? Because I ask him all the time, listen, man, am I doing this the right way? Am I, am I on the path that you want me to be on? Because God's plan is not our plan. Let me just tell you that. So while you out there trying to steal somebody else's stuff, you better ask God, is this what you want me to do to be a thief? Because I'm sure he's going to say no. Find your way. And when you find your way, just be a person of integrity. That's all I say. So I just had to talk to you this morning about being a, being a person of integrity. You know, if you're a minister, if you're a pastor, if you're a nurse, if you're a doctor, you know, if you're a dentist, if you pick up the garbage, whatever you do, have integrity, whatever it is. Because people see that and God sees it too. So listen, that's all I got for you today. I'll be back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Remember, tomorrow's Thursday. I come on at 11 a.m. to bring you more information. If you want to get out of networking in the morning, Gwinnett Chamber is having a networking event. Networking before breakfast starts at 7.30. If you are an early bird and you want to get out, you want to mingle with some business people, Come on over to Gwinnett Chamber for the uh, networking before breakfast meeting, 7.30 in the morning. I know it's early, but the early bird gets the worm. So come on out and join us. I'll be back again tomorrow at 11 a.m., God willing. And until next time, make it a great day. And don't forget, if you missed the episode, go on over to goodmorninggwinnett.com. Check out past episodes. Also, pick up a Gwinnett. I love Gwinnett t-shirt there or rep your zip code at the same time. Next time, make it a great day. You've been listening to Good Morning Gwinnett. Make sure to tune in daily at 9 a.m. Eastern Time to find out what's happening around Gwinnett. If you miss an episode, go to www.goodmorninggwinnett.com to catch up. If you like this episode, go ahead and subscribe to the show now and share it with your friends. 